Namaste yogis. This is Stephen from YogaWorks. Welcome to your practice. Today we're going to have a look at shoulder stand. It's actually a pose, we all know it, we've probably practiced it, but it doesn't feature often in a regular yoga class. And actually there's a very good reason for this because um, often because of the, the setup of the pose and our whole weight coming down and being upside down, there's a good chance that you can hurt your neck or uh, other sensitive areas around the shoulders and the upper back. So it's not an impossible pose, it's a really good one to start uh, going upside down, but it requires a little bit of uh, skillful preparation, a bit of mindfulness and an important prop which is a rather thick blanket or a couple of blankets if you don't have uh, a single thick one. So get that um, now or, or later. You can pause this video of course. I will be using this a little bit later. Also it's good to um, bear in mind that in shoulder stand our arms will move behind the level of the of the shoulders of the back. So this is called shoulder extension. So we'll be doing a lot of this uh, to open the front of the shoulders and the chest, two areas that get really bogged down, a little bit uh, tense and tight from long periods of sitting with poor posture on the computer or behind the steering wheel. So often our shoulders are a little bit rounded forward, including mine. Uh, I've worked in a corporate job for a very long time and I always find in my body I need to open this with um, great regularity. So this is good work um, if, um, if you're in that same situation. Good, I like to start standing with a bit more of a dynamic warm up. It's um, a shoulder warm up I've learned uh, from more Tai Chi martial arts kind of practices. I'll be showing you sideways. All we're going to do is swing the arms forward and back. Keep the shoulders quite relaxed. Keep the arms relaxed. Imagine you're trying to swing your arms so that they shoot back or forwards. So that's the kind of uh, relaxation we're trying to do. At the end of your swing, you can, you can flex the wrist forward and um, point the fingers together if you go back. If you like to bring the forearms, the wrists into it a little bit more, but that's not necessary, that's optional. And then there's one more fun little addition we can add, which is a little bend in the knees every time your hands pass their hips, more or less. You feel when the right time is to add that little bend. So just swing here for a moment, feel your shoulders quite relaxed as best as possible. Let the swing come from the little bend in the knees. Let the arms and shoulders just go. And then especially feel what happens when your arms go behind you. And probably feel a mild little stretch at the front of the shoulders already when you pass through that, that end range position. Last three, two, one and come to stillness. Nice, come to sit. I'm going to show you sideways for this one. I like to tuck the toes under and sit on the heels. But if this causes you excruciating uh, discomfort, then find another way. You can do this one standing as well. Or sitting, but we want a bit of ground clearance. So you'll see why in a moment. Then straighten the right arm. Reach it forward like you're painting a line in a circle and then reach it up. You'll feel there's a kind of a, a point where you stop Then turn the pinky fingers back and reach behind you, behind you, behind you without turning the chest sideways. So stay forward, stretch behind until you come next to your hips with the thumb back. Lead with the thumb. This is shoulder extension. That's the focus of our class today. Reach and turn the thumb up when you can't go further. Stretch up and back, up and back, and then forward. It's quite easy to come down. Let's do one more in this direction. Reach up, 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 until you hit a roadblock. Turn the thumb forward. Reach back with the pinky and slowly come down. Keep rotating the arm internally. The thumb goes back and up first until uh, you can't go further. Open the palm to the sides, reach and come forward and down. 
second sad. If your toes are killing you, then uh, it's actually a really good soles of the feet and toes stretch. But if you need to, you can modify. Left arm is straight. We're painting. Reach up, 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 up until you can't go further. Turn the pinky back. Stretch. Your arm goes out a bit to the side. It's quite normal. But try to make that circle quite broad and do it with your full attention that's going to give us the best benefits we came down forward again we'll do one more circle reach up 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 until you stop turn the pinky back stretch back without turning the chest without tensing the neck that's really hard and then the thumb goes up and back first extension of your shoulder turn the thumb up when you can't go further and slowly come down in the front as you can untuck the toes thank goodness sit back on the heels you can also sit cross-legged no problem clasp your hands together behind the lower back bring them to the left side of the waist i'm not mirroring you so visually it might be opposite and then just instead of flaring the elbows out bring them a little bit together behind you and then start to drop left ear to the left shoulder just let the head be heavy to the side, let the shoulders relax down the back. So a nice stretch to get into the side of the neck. You can always lean the head a bit more forward or a bit more back until you feel the exact best spot for you to get this deep side of your neck stretch. Good. Lift the head back up. Bring the hands to the other side of the waist, the right side. I'm going to drop right ear to right shoulder. Remember, move the elbows a little bit back. Let the head just be heavy. You're not pushing and pulling. You're just allowing the, the weight of the head, the gravity, to do the work here. And then relax the shoulders as best as you can as you take a few breaths. Good. Release the hands, lift the head back up and then swing your legs out in front of you. Place your feet quite wide on the edges of the mat, that's good. And then place your hands about a hand's distance behind the hips with the fingers forward. Push the chest up. Now see how that feels? If it feels um, like there's not much stretch, you can turn the fingers back for a deeper stretch or stay with the fingers forward I'll leave it up to you for me fingers back feels quite nice push the hands down lift the chest move the shoulders a little bit back and then from here keep all of this just drop both knees to the right sides so we're adding a little twist a little bit of outer hips if you like to, you can place right ankle on that left knee but it's not necessary and I keep lifting the chest up, pushing the hands down and just feel that, that front of shoulder, the chest openness. That's what we're going to be focusing on in preparation of our shoulder stand later. It's also a nice practice just to by itself without the shoulder stand. If that doesn't feel good, you don't have to worry about that last pose. And then feet back down, windscreen them back up, so to speak, and then Lift the chest again, push the hands down. I forgot to say, the further you sit away from the hands, the more intense the shoulder stretch gets. The closer you sit, the little bit more manageable that's going to be. So you can choose the intensity. I would say don't go too far because it's right at the beginning of our class, right? So knees drop them over to the left, maybe left ankle, right knee lift the chest and the chest is trying to stay forward even though your legs have dropped to the side as best you can a couple of breaths here some outer hip work some mild twist a bit of chest front of shoulder opening good release that lift the knees back up now turn the fingers forward one hand's distance behind the level of the hips place your feet flat on the mat and then lift the hips into a reverse tabletop you could say push the hands and the feet down 
feel these four points of support and then just lift the hips to a level um, to, to the maximum level that is available to you and then take a few breaths here really push the hands down try to broaden the chest and feel the shoulder blades come together onto your back if your head and neck are not so comfortable and just have a neutral position or you can also look forward towards the knees i'll leave it up to you and then slowly lower back down good we're going to do that again and we'll add something so hands push down feet push down lift the hips up and then bring the feet together this time all the way together in the middle and lift the right leg up lift 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 and then place the right ankle on your left knee try to drop the right knee but without dropping the right hip so we don't want to sag down to the side keep that integrity of the pose push your ankle down on the knee and place right foot next to left if you need to come down in between it's okay otherwise keep going left leg up Woo. left ankle on the right knee dropping left knee without dropping the left hip it's easier said than done keep lifting the hips up pushing the hands down and then undo it and sit down a moment in between in fact straighten the legs and uh, we'll do a little flow in between with the forward fold and that um, bridging up kind of pose so one pose is here the other one is going to be with the bridging up so let's start in the bridge up it's going to be easier to explain the forward fold part so we'll start with the same one hand distance behind the hips fingers face forward push the feet push the hands lift everything up maybe you start to feel a bit more space already then here we're going to do keep the hands where they are start to slide the hips back towards your wrists or in between the wrists and sit down forward fold for a moment keep the feet a little bit active just fold to whatever uh, point is available to you and we'll move back to the first position place the feet, uh, feet down push through the hands lift the chest open the front of the shoulders and then slide the hips back push down with the hands sit down and pull the chest a little bit forward by using your abdominal muscles not your hands good again lift the hips lift 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 this time as you go back you can choose to straighten the legs but not uh, put the hips down so you're in a bit of a suspended forward fold it takes more core work so i'll let you choose which is the best option for you as you two more lift the hips reverse tabletop and then hips slide back push the hands down if you're feeling super strong today maybe even try lift the heels up for a moment one more here we go lift the, hi the hips up you might notice they go a little bit higher than when you just started doing this and slide the hips back maybe push through the hands maybe lift the heels three two one set everything down to a relaxed forward fold super relaxed don't push don't pull just hang out here no need to use the hands to pull yourself closer just rest couple of breaths good getting ready for sun salutations let's come up to the front of the mat we'll modify something slightly so that we get a little more arms behind us shoulder extension otherwise it's going to be the same one breath one movement flow with a sense of ease and presence here we go hands to heart place the feet down or root them down and lift up to the crown of the head inhale lift the arms stretch up to the sky now 
exhale as you forward fold you can bend the knees a bit but clasp the hands behind your lower back and lift them up a bit as you hang the head down so we're adding this little bit just to get a bit more chest and shoulder work in between every sun salute inhale flat back push your hands on the shins stretch the chest forward exhale step the right foot back lower the right knee down inhale lift the arms just a brief moment in a low lunge exhale hands down down dog first inhale shift forward to plank just follow your breath exhale lower all the way down to your belly untuck the toes reach the hands back turn the palms of the hands down and then lift the head the chest the arms and the legs now as we're doing shoulder extension we're trying to lift the backs of the arms as high as we can just for the purpose of our class today and then undo it make your way back to down dog inhale and down dog continue the flow exhale step right foot forward left knee down inhale to lift the arms exhale to step forward fold at the top of the mat inhale rise go all the way up exhale go straight back down continue second round but clasp the hands remember and lift them a little bit away from the back if there's space release your hands to the shins inhale for flat back exhale step left foot back lower the left knee inhale the arms lift keep the gaze relaxed exhale just step back to down dog inhale takes you forward into plank exhale slowly lower down for locust remember palms face down this opens the front of the shoulders more lift the head lift the chest lift the shoulders lift the legs and try your best to lift the backs of the hands and the backs of the arms up i just feel all this musculature the back of the shoulders your triceps are working to get this done release hands under your shoulders you can push up to plank down dog or however you get there inhale slow breath down dog exhale step the left foot forward lower the right knee down inhale lift the arms exhale step to the front fold inhale rise take it all the way up continuing straight down exhale fall over the legs clasp the hands and lift relax the head and the neck inhale is for flat back strengthen your back exhale step the right foot back lower the right knee down inhale let the arms rise exhale step to down dog push the thigh bones to the back good inhale plank pose shift forward exhale lower down with control this time we're doing locust but a variation clasp the hands behind the lower back inhale to lift the head the chest the shoulders the legs and the arms can you lift your hands a little bit further away from the lower back good shift back downward facing dog take a deep inhale exhale the right foot steps forward left knee down inhale arms exhale step to forward fold top of the mat inhale let's rise take it all the way up last round exhale go straight back down and clasp the hands for shoulder stretch in forward fold release hands to shins inhale lift high enough so you can feel the strength in your back exhale to step the left foot back lower the left knee inhale lift the arms sweep up exhale step back to down dog push away through the hands inhale to plank pose shift forward exhale slowly lower to the mat good we're clasping hands again you can always clasp the other way but i don't think it matters that much 
which finger is on top. Inhale, lift the head, the chest, the shoulders, whatever you can, lift, lift, lift. Release the hands, push out your plank, back to down dog, or you can pass through child's pose. Inhale in down dog, get your breath back. Exhale, left foot forward, right knee down. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, step forward, forward fold. Inhale, let's rise We're all the way up. Hands come together, exhale, hands to heart center in Anjali Mudra. Close your eyes for a moment. Take a breath or two to observe your inner state. Nice. Chair pose. Bend your knees a lot. Instead of lifting the arms, we're going to be moving the arms behind us. Lengthen the chest forward and the hips back. Bend the, the knees a little bit more. Stretch back through the arms. Now clasp your hands behind you like a skier going down the mountain. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. And instead of lifting shoulders up to the ears, draw them down the back. Bend the knees a little bit more. And then slowly release the hands down. Step back to down dog. Good, lift the right leg high. Bend your right knee and lean into it a little bit. You can open the hip to the side. Nice, and keep going. We're flipping over. Right foot, step it behind the left knee. And then lift the right arm up. And mainly here we're interested in the bottom arm because this arm is in a good position for the work that we are doing. We're opening the front of the shoulders and the chest. So wild thing is a good one. Now, right foot, we're going to be stepping all the way forward. Make a plan to get this done. But if you can, try to make it a little bit smooth. Oops. And a little bit mindful. I didn't do so well. So hopefully you had a better run. Good. Lift up. Anjaniyasana, which is the low lunge with the knee down. All right, clasp hands behind lower back. Before we do anything, bend the elbows. Place your hands somewhere in the lower back. Draw the shoulders and the elbows back. Keep that. Now start to clasp the fists closer together and work on straightening the arms a little bit more. They may not straighten all the way. Nobody is requiring this of you, so don't put these unnecessary pressures on yourself either. There's no one single right version to do yoga pose, so don't um, imagine there is one. Good. Release this, the clasp in the hands. Start to lift the back foot up. If it's available, hold the back foot with one hand or, if you can, with both hands. Now, if you notice, this is exactly the same pose as we've done before, except now the, oops, the front of the ankle is in your hands. <laughs> you might lose your balance, which means you quickly have to do something to catch yourself. It's all part of the fun. If you got your foot, then push it into the hand, so let it pull your shoulders back. If you don't have the foot, then just repeat the previous version with the foot down, the hands clasped. No problem at all. Release the foot, step back, downward facing dog. Inhale, let's, let's shift forward to plank. Exhale, slowly lower down. Nice. Locust again. Turn the palms of the hands down next to your hips. This time we keep the lower body down, so keep the tops of the feet grounded. And then when you're ready, lift the head, lift the chest, lift the shoulders a little bit, and then lift the hands. Now all we're going to do is some little shoulder pumps where we lift 
the backs of the arms, the backs of the hands up a bit, while keeping the arms and the wrists straight. Shoulder pumps. Let's do last 10. Five, four, three, two, one, and lower down. Ooh la la, that's harder than I thought. This arm's going behind you. You might just notice you don't do a lot of it, so it's quite unknown territory. Good, let's press back. Downward facing dog, take a breath. Lift the left leg high. Bend the left knee, open your hip to the side. You can lean into it a little bit, whatever feels good, little twist. Then when it's time, lower the left foot behind your right knee. When it's there, use this to push the ground away with your right hand, with both your feet. You can reach the left arm up and over and feel the openness in the front of the right shoulder. If you turn your chest a little bit more, up to the ceiling, you'll feel that even more. Good, now our next job is to get that left foot forward. You can draw left knee to your chest. You can step all the way there. You might need to take a few smaller steps or help a little bit with your hands. All of this is fair game. Lift up, low lunge, so the back knee is done. Clasp your hands together behind your back. First, bend the elbows, place your thumbs on your lower back. Then the shoulders, draw them back, draw the elbows back. Keep that, feel a little squeeze between your shoulder blades. Keep the shoulders down, we don't want to lift them up towards the ears. And then work on moving the hands a bit further away from the back. Shoulders go back, maybe the arms straighten a little bit or all the way. Release that. You know we'll do the next version with the back foot lifted. If this is not for you, then just repeat the previous one. Otherwise, lift the right foot, hold the front of the ankle, one foot, one hand to the foot is fine, or two hands to the front of the ankle. So you've got a nice hand grip there. And then once you've got the foot, push your foot back into the hands and let it sort of pull your shoulders back and broaden the chest forward. Three, two, one. Let the right foot gently lower if you're holding it. Otherwise, um, you're already good, of course. Step back. To down dog, this is sort of a, a reset pose, you could say. Couple of breaths. To recover. Good. From here, let me turn around so you see better. Step your right foot forward. Turn the left heel down, leave a bit of space between the two feet and then lift up with the upper body. So warrior one, legs Virabhadrasana one, cross the hands together. We've done this a couple of times, so hopefully it becomes a bit more known territory. You know that we're moving the shoulder blades back, you know we're moving the shoulders and the elbows back. And you can always straighten the arms, but learn that straightening the arms become the main event. It is not. It is the shoulders moving back. Good. Inhale to lift the chest. Exhale. You can start to lean forward towards your right knee. Stop wherever. If there's a little bit more space, you can go a little bit inside your right knee with the shoulders as the hands lift up. Don't try to do the same as anybody else. Just do radically your own version of the pose making you sure you're safe, you're reasonably comfortable. Not all the poses are extremely comfortable, but you don't want to be in any kind of pain or crazy discomfort. Take another breath here. Good. Now, got a little bit of a journey. Keep a lift up a little bit. 
stay low but lift the back heel i'm gonna need to shift back a little bit otherwise i'll be with my head in my plant so here we go we're gonna lean forward push the right foot down lift the left foot when it's time and then fly forward into warrior three with the hands clasped behind your back right knee can always bend a little bit it's gonna help with your balance do something active with the back leg, stretch the toes back and then slowly release your hands down, step to down dog. If even after that quite demanding little sequence, you need to move more, then you're very welcome to do vinyasa, but don't rush. Also in your vinyasa, pay attention to shoulder extension, which we get mainly in locust. Um, and there's a few other backbends which we'll explore later. Think of camel and bridge style poses. Good. Step your left foot forward. Turn the right heel down. Take a moment to get your, your foundation in order. That's, that's often half of the work. Good. And then lift up warrior one base. Instead of lifting the arms up, that's more overhead, that's shoulder flexion. We're doing the arms back behind us. You can clasp, you can do your thing, move the shoulders back. You can even keep the elbows bent if that feels good to keep your hands on the lower back. And that's a good place to be as well. In all of these options, our shoulders are, our arms are moving behind the shoulders. Good, inhale to lift the chest. Exhale to start to fold towards your left knee, stop wherever. If there's more space, hang the head down inside the shin. Just be nice and relaxed in the upper body, but you're going to be quite active in the lower body. Obviously, this is supporting you to stay upright and balanced. Another moment or so. Good, stay low. Start to look forward, lift the back heel. Start to lean forward more, push your left foot down. Keep the hands in the same position, unless if that's a problem. And then lift the right leg, stretch the chest forward, stretch the knuckles of the hands back. Do something active with your top leg. One more breath. Good, hands down. Downward facing dog. Hmm. Take a slow breath in. Take a slow breath out. Inhale to shift forward to plank. Exhale to lower down onto your belly. Good. Let's do some more shoulder extensions, shall we? I really like the next one. I mean, like. It's rather tough, but it's an amazing um, strengthener for the backs of the shoulders. So it works like this. We're going to be putting our fists, our knuckles down under the elbow. So just look back, get this more or less 90 degree angle there. So of your forearms to the ground. And then just feel this for a moment. Push the fists down onto the ground, just feel that contact. And then keep this as you slightly lift the head and the chest. Nice, now can you keep all of this? Don't lower the chest down, but lift the knuckles a little bit up, away from the mat. Move the triceps behind your torso. Keep this, slowly straighten the arms. And then bend the elbows, but you're not allowed to touch your mat with your knuckles. Uh-oh, should have said so earlier. Straighten your arms. Keep the chest lifted, bend your elbows, hover the fists. Let's do two more. Straighten the arms, feel the triceps, as if there was any need to remind you. And then bend your elbows. <laughs> Let's do one more. Straighten the arms, bend and hover, and release. I don't know about you, but I'm going to take a little breather. 
if you want to keep moving then by all means don't let me stop you okay downward facing dog is where we meet step the right foot forward turn the left heel down warrior two legs this time slowly lift up stretch your arms forward and back take a moment just to feel the steadiness the strength in the shoulders to let the breath flow with ease that's now straighten the front leg so both legs are straight clasp your hands behind the lower back Nice. We're going to be moving to triangle pose with a bit of a variation with the arms. We're going to be keeping the hands clasped. Now start to look towards your back foot or just behind you. And then start to lower the right shoulder down towards the front foot, towards the right foot. As you, with the knuckles, you're moving towards the back foot as well. Nice. So go straight sideways. Try not to collapse that top shoulder down. And then you don't have to look back, that's a bit uncomfortable for the neck, so just have the head in neutral as you stretch your knuckles back and your chest towards the front. Some really nice version to get into triangle pose also takes all that pressure away from where that bottom hand is. People tend to focus on this way too much, to be honest. You can then slowly come up, re bend. The front knee now keep the hands clasped as we will start to fall straight down the middle if that's too much go a little bit more towards your front foot really nice to get into inner thighs but also we're again getting the the shoulder extension with the arms behind behind us good release that come back up release the hands as well we're going to step onto the right foot for half moon pose right hand a bit forward and to the side lift the left arm this is option one but if you want more shoulder work then i would recommend to grab the back foot if it's available and kick it behind you which is really great again to open the front of that shoulder get into the chest a bit and of course it's a it's a demanding balancing pose on top of that good release that step back take a moment in down dog there's always child's pose if you need um, a bit more of a break now step your left foot forward turn the right heel down warrior two open the arms settle into the pose a pose in, in Sanskrit, by the way, is called asana, which is translated as seat. So often it's nice to take your seat. We're not sitting down as in the conventional way, but it does suggest you're quite stable and comfortable in it. Good. Clasp your hands, straighten the front leg. Triangle pose with a bit of a twist. Look back towards your right shoulder. Or over the right shoulder start to lower the left shoulder towards the left foot stretch the knuckles back towards the back of your mat and then you can turn the head to neutral you don't need to look back anymore just I like to look in the direction of the chest or whatever feels good take a moment here to feel triangle pose maybe in a whole new way that you might have never done before Keep the hands clasped, left back up, re-bend the front knee. This is called, I think, the ostrich. Start to fold forward, lift the hands, hang the head down, but keep the legs quite active. Again, if it's too much, go a bit more with the torso towards your left ankle. Otherwise, go a bit more in the middle. Good. Release the hands and come back up. 
when we're stepping into half moon pose. So step onto the left foot, reach left hand forward and to the side. When you're ready, lift the right leg, right arm. Option one, balance here. Option two, grab the right ankle in your right hand, kick it back and see if you can find a bit of a shoulder stretch while you're balancing, while you're doing your breath. There's a lot going on in every pose. So don't worry if you miss out a couple of elements. That is incredibly common. And then release that. Step back, down dog. Inhale, shift forward to plank. Exhale, lower down. Nice, shift your hands from the from the front of your shoulders shift them a little bit further back next to the middle of your chest then with the forehead down or the chin down you could choose start to lift the hands up a little bit off the mat again feel the musculature back of the shoulders triceps is on now start to lift the head and the chest a bit so we're in cobra pose with more active arms. Try to move your elbows back and behind you a little bit more. Nice, now you can place the hands down. Maybe push through the hands a bit for a bit of a deeper cobra. It's more of a back bend, but we've lost the shoulder extension if you notice. Good, so it's all what our purpose is. Shift back, child's pose for a moment. Take a few breaths, register how it feels to be in your body right now. And then slowly lift up. We'll be setting up for camel pose. Tuck your toes under for this one, have your, have your knees hip distance apart. Good, then here place the hands on the backs of the hips. Push the hips a little bit forward and then with the shoulders move them back, the elbows move them back behind you and then get a little lift of the chest. What I like to do also is creep the hands a little bit higher to the bottom of your ribcage, do the same thing Elbows move back, shoulders move back. Now lift the ribcage up and you'll feel there's a bit more of a lift in the chest. Don't allow the hips to shift back, keep them forward. Lift the chest up, maybe allow the neck to follow the curvature of the spine. If your neck is not happy with this, then rather keep it um, not neutral, but looking forward. That might help to Feel a bit more relaxed. Good, slowly release. Sit back for a moment. You can repeat this option. Other option is, which I quite like, is to come into camel from the bottom to the top. It takes a bit more strength, but you'll feel um, that there's just more skill, more control um, entering from it this way. I hope you'll um, you'll enjoy this. Hold the heels with your hands so my toes are tucked under so I've got a little bit more leverage. And then first start to move your quads, your thighs forward, then start to push the hips forward, then start to lift the chest, then you can add the head leaning back. So it's like a bit of a wave, we came into it from the bottom to the top. Usually we lean back from the top and sort of fall into the pose, so to speak. This feels a bit more controlled and steady. So this is a great pose for shoulder extension. The arms go behind the level of the shoulders. And then slowly undo it. You can untuck the toes and sit back. Take a few breaths. And then swing your legs out in front. We're gonna lie down for bridge pose, another amazing pose to practice the arms behind us. 
So place your feet, you can always look on the other side, it's not easy to know where to place the feet. It's perfectly fine to have your feet a bit wider than the hips, don't have them narrower. It's even fine to turn the toes out a little bit, nothing bad is going to happen. And for tighter hips, this might actually be providing a bit more space. Now we're going to push the feet down, lift the hips up and clasp the hands behind you. We've been doing this a ton of times today, so hopefully there's a bit more space and awareness to do that. Press the feet down. What's nice to, to wiggle side to side so that the shoulders come a bit more underneath you and you get a bit more of a squeeze between the shoulder blades. Think of expanding the chest towards your chin. Press the backs of the arms down. And from that space, lift the hips by pushing the feet down. Take another breath. And then slowly release the hips down. A little moment of rest. If it feels good, you can lean the knees in together. Nice, we'll do one more bridge pose. You can repeat the previous one, or if you want a slightly different one and it's available to you, you'll have to check. You can move the feet, the heels closer into your buttocks, hold the front of the ankles. So now your heels are really close and we're actually doing like bow pose, but lying on our back. So the, the opposite way around than we normally do. Hold the front of the ankles if you can, otherwise don't worry about it. Do the hands clasped one. And then use this to lift the hips up again, lift the chest up again. And now you can pull, it's like a closed circuit. So you have a little bit more pull through the hands. Just a different way to experience bridge. Take two more slow breaths, don't rush. Then after the second breath, exhale to slowly release. Knees can come in together, or you can open the knees wide for a little rest. Nice. Slowly come up. It's time to get a prop, which is our thick blanket. Place the blanket across your mat and it should be it should be quite elevated and if you measure the distance uh, of your your triceps that should easily fit on the mat so it shouldn't be too short otherwise um, you won't be able to push down this is a platform for pushing the elbows down so that the chest can lift and then we don't uh, lose the curvature in the back of the neck which the neck is already a bit weakened due to the sitting and the computer work and the screen time so we don't need to add um, more pressure on this rather tender part of the body if you can imagine so make sure you've got uh, some padding really important you might even need more padding than this but this is what i had available today good then we'll lie down with the top of the shoulders on the mat on the padding and the back of the head is off the padding, straight on the mat. So if you notice my head is a little bit lower than the level of the shoulders, and I'm checking, if I push my elbows down here, then um, they're still on that, that pad, the blanket that I have um, created. I just notice I'm gonna have to shift a little bit forward because the plow pose is not gonna work. So you need a bit of space um, beyond the head over the head good we'll keep this bring the knees up to the chest you might have to swing a little bit because now you're a bit higher on that blanket there's a couple of options here the knees i would recommend to bend your knees place them towards the forehead or in that direction and then support the elbows down and support your back with the hands the lower back so that all your 10 fingers face up. If you need to look, then don't look while you're in the pose, rather pose, uh, pause the video, have a look, 
And when you're confident, then uh, press play and do it yourself. It's not great to look side to side while your whole body weight is on the neck, you can imagine. And then plow pose, there's another version. You could straighten the legs out so that the toes touch down. If that's the case, you can release your hands, maybe clasp them together like I've been doing. And there's a nice shoulder extension, forward fold, inversion kind of pose. If your toes don't touch down, then rather keep the support with the hands on the back. So only release if the toes are down, you can straighten the legs. Otherwise you'll need more support. Good. Then re-support the hands, push the elbows down. If you can't push the elbows down, it means you need a thicker pad. And then with the hands supported, lift one leg at a time, just check it out. Don't look while you're in this pose, rather pause the video. Look first and then try. And then I'm lifting the other leg. If I'm confident that my support is fine, my neck feels quite relaxed. All the weight is on the upper back, on the top of the shoulders, and then you can reach the feet up to the sky. If there's any discomfort or weird feeling in the neck, on the shoulders, then please abort, come out immediately. No yoga pose is worth hurting your joints or any part of your body. We're doing this to get better, not to get worse. And if it's possible, slide the hands a bit lower down the back, so closer to the ground. Push into the back to straighten the body out as much as you can. Squeeze the buttocks. Take a few breaths. One more deeper breath. And then slowly take your time to lower the feet overhead back into plow. Feel free to bend the knees. And then using your hands on the mat, we're going to be using this as a brick to slowly roll out. Keep the legs close to your face for as long as you can as you place one vertebra down at a time. It's a really nice little spinal roll really good core work actually if you do it slowly mindfully and then once you're there you can lower the legs take a few breaths take a few breaths and then as you still lie back you allow the breath to return to normal just really gently turn your head to the right slowly and turn your head to the left so let's just to undo or release any tension that did build up in the upper back and in the neck if you're new to this then take take your time to learn these poses don't try to do all of it in one go it's going to require many repetitions preferably with a qualified teacher present there who can check your alignments so don't rush into any of these unless if it feels like you're totally ready it feels amazing in your body and you are uh, using the props and checking in how you feel and then you can stop rolling the head slowly come up just enough to um, remove that support we're going to be doing a pigeon pose to end with so slide your right knee forward you don't have to do it from down dog slide the right knee forward stretch the left leg back and then just slightly more active before we rest down you can lift up pressing the fingertips down grounding through the hips and then what i've been really enjoying in my home practice is just to lift the back foot 
and stretch the left hand back to hold the top of the left foot. It's really nice to get a bit of quad stretch in front of, front of this left hip as you're stretching the right outer hip. If that feels good, you can do the same. If it doesn't, then of course I wouldn't recommend it. You can kick this foot into the hand a little bit or another option is just to press it a little bit closer to your hip, whatever feels best. And then release that back foot if you're holding it and just rest down in a more of a restful pigeon, sleeping pigeon pose. We've worked um, pretty hard, done some demanding poses, standing and balancing and shoulder extending and we've done some inversions, the plow and the shoulder stand might be quite new to you so just give yourself some credit for trying something challenging and unknown well done and if none of it really worked or felt good in the, you're in good company i was exactly the same there's none of these poses were really accessible to me when i started my practice so just um stay with it and don't rush and then slowly lift up let's change sides however you want to swap left foot foot no not left foot left knee forward right foot back stretch the right leg back in line with the right hip i like to start a bit more actively pressing hands down lifting the chest a little back bend it's nice as a counter of the the forward bending of the plow and the shoulder stand as well and then if if you like this you can hold the back foot with your right hand or with both hands but um, I often think the right hand is enough you push the foot into the hand or squeeze the heel closer to your buttock whatever feels best at the same same time allow the left hip to relax down so you get a good outer hip stretch and then allow the right foot to lower if you're holding it a moment to rest the forehead you can make a pillow with the hands and sit in the pose for a little moment These moments of rest, of letting go, are really important. And are sometimes the hardest part where you're not pushing, you're just, you're not drifting off in the mind. You're not wishing that you, that you could work harder. You're not trying to deepen the pose. You're just taking a moment. And then slowly release, come back up. Two options, you can just swing this right leg forward, lie down on your back, or you can sit for a brief seated meditation. Pick your choice, I'm gonna sit. But if you're lying down, then um, that's a really good choice too. Rest your body down in this simple place. Feel the safe sanctuary of your yoga mat and feel that sanctuary extend to your body and to your mind. This body and this mind should feel safe to us. This is our home for our lifetime. And through yoga, we're just making it a better home one session at a time. Allow all tension to dissipate, become more relaxed with every out breath. Enjoy this moment. 
where nothing is expected of you. If you have a little bit more time for a longer Shavasana or meditation, then by all means, pause this video and continue. If your yoga time is up, you need to attend to other work, then take a few deeper breaths. If you're lying down, start to move your hands, move your feet. If you're seated, just stay here. If you're lying down, roll over to your one side and start to make yourself upright into a seated position. And then bring palms together in front of the chest. Touch your hands to your forehead. To your heart center and bow to yourself on the mat. Thank you so much for practicing with me. Namaste, everybody. Well done. Good work. Take it easy with these poses. Uh, work at them, like sort of slowly chipping away. Um, don't expect to do all of it in one go, but well done for showing up, for trying something new, and I hope to see you here again real soon. Take good care.